Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Timothy Lee, and I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on gold and copper exploration and, and development today. We will hear from Marshall Koval, CEO, and Scott Hicks, VP Corporate Development and Communications of Luminex Resources Corp. During today's webinar, they will provide an overview and outlook. Then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time and we will get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first we need to discuss some fine print. Uh, during this Luminex webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the Luminex corporate presentation, and that can be found on the company's website, luminexresources.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. Please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on Luminex. So we have Luminex presenting today. The company has a portfolio of projects in Ecuador including its flagship Condor project, as well as other projects where the work is funded by partner companies. Uh, this includes gold deposits, as well as copper porphyry targets. With that, I now turn it over to Marshall and Scott to update our audience on the company. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Glad to have us today. Appreciate all your audience's time and interest. Uh, Luminex Resources was spun out of Lumina Gold. Lumina Gold is our sister company with a mirrored management team, and we're advancing the Congrejos project in Ecuador. Its uh, PFS was recently completed, so if there's interest from uh, the viewers to understand Lumina Gold, you can look at our website. So all the other assets that we had in Ecuador, and at the time we were the second largest uh, concession holder in Ecuador, were put into Equinox. And these were generally earlier stage copper exploration, more greenfield stuff, but um, we also have our Condor project, which is our flagship project in Luminex, and I'll talk about that a bit more. A forward-looking statement, as Tim mentioned. Um, so if you look at really what we have is we have gold and copper assets in Ecuador with two key partners. Uh, the partners are Anglo-American and Jogmec. Anglo-American is currently drilling our Pegasus project uh, right now, so we hope to have results out in the next uh, few months there. They have uh, 57,000 or 57 million um, expenditure to earn 60%, and then they can earn an additional 10% by taking us to a production decision. And then uh, JogMike has our Arcadius, and, and again, these are both uh, copper porphyry targets. Um, Orchidias, they have to spend $7 million to earn 70%. But back to the flagship project that we have is the Condor Gold Copper Project. We got 2.3 million ounces of gold and in indicated and 4.3 million ounces of gold and in inferred at Condor. Um, and then we have, you know, both uh, resource categories, about 400 uh, million uh, pounds of copper. We did a PEA on Condor North, the epithermal area to the north, which we'll focus on today. And we had 387 million MPV at $1,600 gold, 187,000 ounces of gold production per annum over 12 years. Right now we're uh, stepping out on the Cuyas West high grade underground target, which may allow us to rescope that PEA, lower the initial capital cost and come up with a, a better economic project to update a, a PEA in the future. We're also drilling at Prometador, uh, a satellite gold target. And uh, basically we'll walk through this now. Um, if we look at uh, Luminex ownership uh, with Ross Beatty and management control about 24.2% of the company, uh, Ecuadorian entrepreneurial group have about 14%. A fund out of San Francisco, Route 1, has 8.3%. And then we've got a couple other funds in at 14.4%. Uh, the uh, issued and outstanding shares are 173 million, fully diluted 213 
million, uh, market cap about 51 million Canadian. Uh, we're trading just a hair above the 30 cents, so it's a bit higher today. 9 million cash on hand and, you know, 52 uh, week trading range of 18 to 49 cents. Uh, Ecuador, if we look at what has happened in Ecuador since 2014, when we entered the country, two major mines have been built in Fruta del Norte and Mirador. We've got uh, ready to construct uh, three underground high quality, high grade projects, Curipamba, La Plata, Loma Larga. And then we've got uh, Cascavel that's at PFS stage, uh, Congrejos, where, what I just mentioned, we completed the uh, PFS recently. And we have a PEA complete on Condor. If you sort of look at the country from uh, a mining export perspective, it's interesting. The top four uh, exports out of the country are petroleum, uh, shrimp farming, bananas, and mining. Mining was number four in March. It moved up to number three. So it continues to be an important part of the Ecuadorian economy going forward. And if you look at the investment attractiveness by the Fraser Institute, it's really improved since 2014. So I think uh, in the long term, uh, Ecuador will continue to be a developing mining country. Geologically, it's one of the last systematically unexplored regions in Latin America and probably the world. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the concessions where we're at. These green concessions in the middle of Pegasus A and B is where uh, the Anglo JV is. And then if you look at the south east portion of the country, that's where we're at in this trend that has Warenza, Mirador, Fruta del Norte, and then the Condor project. And that's where we're primarily operating. These blue uh, concessions are additional concessions that we control um, in the region. That's Cascas, Chilapo, Tres Picachas, Tarki, La Canela, Kimi. And if we go and look at who's in this neighborhood, this is the most highly prospective uh, mineralized area within the country. As I mentioned earlier, you, you've got Warenza to the north, our Tarki and our Kimi projects south of that. Then you get into Mirador, um, and then you get down into Fruta del Norte, and you can see our Condor project is contiguous with the uh, Fruta del Norte border. And then you can see Orchidias and Cascas there. Now, one thing that's interesting in the Condor project is we've got the northern epithermal area that's shown here as Camp, Cuya, Soledad, and Emma. And then that's where about 3 million ounces of gold are in the resource. But we also have this gold copper porphyry at Santa Barbara, which uh, was not included in the uh, PEA. And that's another 3 million ounces of gold and about 400 million uh, pounds of copper. Um, this is just a, a, a zoom in a little bit more of uh, the whole region from top to bottom with kind of gold and copper resources in it. But uh, we're about 33 kilometers south of Fruta del Norte and about 55 south of Mirador. Uh, like I mentioned before, there's roughly 6.5 million ounces of gold. Uh, our current claims at uh, the Condor project are 10,000 hectares. So there's a lot of exploration area that we haven't touched yet. There's been about 135,000 meters of drilling uh, at Condor North in the central area. We own 98.7% of um, the concessions there. 1.3% is owned by the Ecuador Armed Forces uh, Pension Fund. We spent about um, 40 million to date. Um, this is looking at the resources that we have, and uh, I won't go through this table, but you can see the high level that I mentioned earlier if you look at the summaries there. In these red areas to the north, you've got Cuyas, Camps, Emma, and Soledad, and then we're, we're calling that the area that was included in the PEA. And then to the south, you see the Santa Barbara deposit, and then you also see the um, the Nyumbi uh, area. And so within this package, there's both in the central area, there's both copper and gold at Juan Winsa and Alito and Santa Barbara. And then to the north, it's primarily gold and silver. 
Um, this is coming in a little bit closer and looking at uh, what we've tested to date. The In the PEA in uh, 2021, we had both underground target, the camp deposit, as you'll see there, and then we had open pit targets at uh, Cuyas and Soledad and Emma, and those were included in the, the PEA. And the initial PEA was 25,000 tons per day, of which 2,500 came from the camp zone underground, and most of the re and all of the rest of it came from the open pit. What we discovered subsequently is this Cuyas West zone that you can see kind of northeast, southwest, uh, striking there towards the camp zone. And that's a high grade discovery that we've made. We've got uh, about 20, 28 holes into it as we speak. And uh, it's returned some of the highest grade mineralization we've seen in, uh, in the whole region. So that may allow us to scope uh, a project, lower initial capital costs, maybe start underground at um, the camp zone and Cuyas West simultaneously. Both of these deposits are close to the surface, um, so pretty easy access underground. This is looking at the camp zone. Uh, there were about 600,000 ounces of gold in the PEA that were put into a mine plant, 600,000 ounces of resource. Subsequently, we drilled uh, a couple of new areas and you can see the five holes here. And, and they've returned, uh, for instance, C2239 returned five meters to 15 grams. Um, the next Next couple of holes were nine grams and then 3.8 and 11 grams. And what's significant about these new holes is they're higher grade on average than the overall grade of the camp zone, which was 3.45 grams per ton uh, gold equivalent. So we look like we've added some more ounces here. And the idea is once we finish up drilling at uh, Cuyas West, this initial drill program, uh, another 10 holes roughly, which would make it sort of the same drilling frequency as we had at the camp zone. We'll kind of look at internally what resource we have there and decide how we advance um, Cuyas West in, in a potential overall project. Uh, what does uh, finding the second camp zone matter? You know, while the deposit uh, is in production for seven years in the 2020 PEA, it represents about 10% of the total mill feed, but represents 32% uh, of the production with 70,000 ounces of gold equivalent per year on average. So basically what we look at here is with Cuyas, we're hoping that we can get to the point with Cuyas and Camp Zone together Maybe we have a million and a half ounces of gold that we can put into a uh, mine plan and go ahead and move the project forward uh, with that as the scope. So here's the Condor West uh, or the Cuyas West deposit. Here's what's really interesting here. If we look at um, the holes on the left, hole CU2101 down through uh, 17 or down through 22 these are our best holes but as i mentioned the camp zone was sort of uh, 3.45 grams per ton gold equivalent average you can see here we've got thicknesses of anywhere from four meters up to um what do we have here i guess 15 meters and we're sort of five grams all the way up to 30 grams. So this has the potential to really increase the gold ounces that we might be able to bring into a mine plant. And it's fairly significant. And we're just starting to understand the structural nature of these higher grade gold deposits. So there's more potential in the future uh, in other areas. But right now, we're really focused on bringing this Cuyas West up to a resource category. Um, this is just a, a great thickness map. Uh, it's kind of difficult to kind of see all the numbers here, but basically the, the whole system is holding together. Um, we've been able to find about 400 meters long strike and about 200, 250 meters down dip and it remains open. And this is interesting here. This is um, what you see in the shaded red is the mine plan uh, from the uh, from the camp zone, and what you can see now is the overlay of drilling uh, from Cuyas West. 
So we still got some more drilling to do at depth and along, but it's a, it's a very similar size um, deposit. And uh, basically it's quite a bit higher grade. So we hope to bring in quite a bit more gold into a potential resource in the future. This is uh, kind of interesting as well. We discovered an unknown uh, breccia pipe with this drilling. So we were targeting the higher grade Cuyas West uh, structure, which you could see on the left side of this figure. And we put uh, about four holes through um, this breccia pipe. But what's interesting, if you look at these four holes on the, on the left here, is we're seeing quite a bit high grade um, breccia material uh, that is potentially open pitable. So you, we've sort of got 165 meters of 1.58 and then 200 meters of 1.18 and then 96 meters of 1.14 and then finally 211 meters of 1.16. So basically uh, we'll continue to, to drill down dip. It looks open and it looks like grades are holding up all the way through that. So we'll continue to look at this uh, with the current drilling program and understand how it may come into a mine plan into the future. Um, this is the Prometador zone. We've, uh, we've drilled about seven holes in this area now. Uh, we haven't got all the results back. We're awaiting those, but it's a surface anomaly, potential open pit and, and maybe underground target about a kilometer long. So uh, we should see drill results in the future, near future for this target. Um, this I sort of talked about at a high level, so I won't spend too much time on it here, but the important thing to look at here is the 607 million initial capital for the 25,000 ton per day project that I mentioned earlier. If we're successful with the Cuyas West in the camp zone, and looking at a starter project with those two underground opportunities, we're likely to be able to cut that uh, initial capital down in half. And instead of a 25,000 ton per day project, maybe we go with a four or 5,000 ton per day underground project initially, lower capital, higher grade, and then look at bringing in the open pit uh, potential the new breccia zone and the existing open pit resources we have into the future. Let me go on and talk a little bit about um, the Anglo-American earning we have. So Anglo has our largest land uh, package in the country. They're focused on this Pegasus A area right now. That's about 37,000 hectares of land, quite large uh, area. They've identified eight porphyry copper targets. They're currently drilling this Medusa target in the upper left-hand side of this slide. I'll show you a cross-section through that in a bit. But they're also continuing to do work on these eight, uh, on these seven other um, porphyry copper targets. So it it's, looks great as far as copper potential. Um, go and look at Medusa. Medusa basically, there was some drilling, so we know there's a porphyry there, but geophysics um, supports both magnetics and resistivity, a large porphyry copper target. And this is what um, Anglo is drilling right now. They're drilling 3,200 met meters at Medusa here. So um, over the next several months here, we should start to see results from this. And then the Orchidius uh, Jogmec urn in. There was work done by First Quantum. Uh, we drilled a hole there and Jogmec has gone back in and, and looked at um, research and, and looked at the results to date. And they've come up with a targeted program. Last year, we drilled uh, 2,500 meters. They've got some holes selected now. We'll probably drill a 1,500 meter drill program here in a few months. So when you look at reasons to invest in um, Luminex, 2.3 million ounces of gold and indicated and 4.3 million ounces of gold and inferred. We, we have uh, more than underpinned the value of the company with the PEA that we put out in 2021, which showed a 387 million MPV at Condor North. That's about half of the project resources, doesn't include Santa Barbara or the new Cuyas West. We're drilling, uh, 
the priority targets I've already talked about, Cuyas West, and, and we did a little bit of drilling also to add to the camp zone. We have earnings that are non-diluted with two partners, Anglo-American earning in 60% at Pegasus drilling now, Jogmec earning in 70%, we'll be drilling more this, this year. Luminex currently holds an additional 34,000 hectares. This is Tarki, Kimi, uh, several other concessions, Coscas uh, that I mentioned earlier. We've got a team that's uh, got a consistent history of exploring and discovering and de-risking and monetizing assets. Uh, most of the team has been together with Ross Beatty since he founded the Lumina Group back in 2003. Uh, Leo Hathaway, our chief geologist, myself, uh, have been with Ross since 2004. A lot of the rest of the team members have been with us for over 10 years. So we're a highly aligned management team with 25% ownership across the Lumina Group. And, uh, you know, we want to add value and de-risk these projects and, and create shareholder value. So with that, Tim, I think uh, we'll open it up to questions. Great, thank you very much, Marshall uh, and Scott, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we'll now uh, start the, the uh, Q&A portion of the webinar. A reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Um, we do have a, a couple of questions in mind here. Um, first, you've said you're focusing more on the underground mining potential at Condor North. Um, would you plan to complete a new PEA uh, with with that focus as the as the starter operation. Scott, we haven't heard much from you yet, so why don't you take this one on? <laughs> yeah, um, so what we're doing right now, you know, we've got about, call it 25 drill holes back. So we're starting to do some preliminary work on uh, internal resource right now, Tim. And then, you know, we plan on drilling kind of 35-ish holes total at that Cuyas West area. And that'll form the basis of the new resource there. and. Um, you know, we'll probably put that out in kind of late Q3 uh, type timing, early Q4. Um, and then that would be the basis for a new PEA. Uh, that's that's the current thinking right now. Um, but yeah, we'll kind of keep looking at all this stuff internally as we go along. We're starting met work at the Cuyas West uh, area right now, um, sending some of that off to our lab in, in Lima, uh, Plenge Lab. And um so that'll hope we're hoping to see, you know, similar recoveries to what we saw at camp, kind of 90 plus percent recovery. So that'll all be information that gets integrated into the PEA. Okay. Um, and you mentioned the uh, the new Breccia body at, at Condor North. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Um, and you had mentioned maybe that would be an open pit target or, or would it be in, you know, potentially kind of bulk mining underground target? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the answer to that isn't isn't clear yet. We have to get, continue to drill. I saw, you know, some of it is grading as high as one and a half grams per ton. I think if you look at it from an underground perspective, that's getting close to where you may be able to make some money. You'd want to see north of two grams normally. But um, a lot of it also has to depend on how we approach the Cuyas West higher grade structure that's off to the west of it. So, you know, I can't give you a final answer on it, but it, it's both got open pit and definitely open pit potential and possibly underground as well. Uh, one question that's always popular is how much cash do you have and how long will that last with your current plans? So uh, we go ahead, Scott. Oh, yeah. So that that life financing we completed earlier this year, that that was 12 months of capital. So that uh, should get you out kind of to early next year. All right, great. Um, and you had mentioned, obviously, the, the project, the Pegasus project with Anglo Gold. When might we expect results uh, from, from drilling there? Uh, Anglo American and oh, Anglo American, uh, sorry, no worries, no. Just, to, yes. just to clarify. Um, but, um, you know, we don't control the operatorship, so we'll see what they they kind of owe us a quarterly report right now, so we'll we'll get an update soon. Um, but uh, you know, I know they did stop drilling for a little bit of time when there was the earthquake and the heavy rains, um, so that you know, it's it hasn't exactly been the easiest uh, operating year there, but uh, they're still drilling now, so. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get results out as soon as we can. Great. 
Um, and similarly with, with Jogmec, uh, um, it, it's either likely be drilling uh, on that project as well this year. Yeah, I think we're, we're slated for a July start to the program there, Marshall, is that right? Yeah, yeah, and we're the operator on that, so we'll, uh, we'll control that. Okay, great. Um, I suppose one other general question, uh, a concern anywhere in the world, but, but Ecuador sometimes has flared up with different issues, but can you tell us a little bit about more about local community relations and, you know, which groups that, that you're working with and, and uh, how you address that, that side of things? Yeah, so you hear a lot in Ecuador about, um, you know, the indigenous communities and some of the political aspects of those communities uh, looking to, to, you know, shut down mining as a general thing within the country. That uh, That's really a, a localized sort of scenario when you get down to an operation level. So at Condor, we're, we don't have the project itself. It's not on indigenous property or indigenous land. We have indigenous communities in the area and we work with them. And we work quite well with the, the local communities. We've got employment. We use a lot of temporary employment when we move drill rigs around. So overall, in general, we have a, a really good working relationship with the communities around Condor. And we're able to continue to operate uh, without, without issues there. So basically, you know, the key part of uh, what you do is locally, you do hear noise nationally, but um, anyway, I think if you look, for instance, at our Lumina Gold project in Grejos, that's in an area where there's no indigenous communities. And, um, so it all depends on where you're at in the country, how you deal with the immediate communities around you. So that's, uh, Scott, you got anything you want to add there? I oh, thought that was well said. Okay, great. Um, and I guess an, another question, this is, I'm recalling this from, uh, from the Lumina Gold uh, webinar recently, but national politics there, um, obviously, uh, President Lasso is considered relatively business friendly. Mm -hmm. um, but do you see any changes there uh, coming or does that seem like it's fairly stable? Um, any thoughts on, on the national the political situation there? Yeah, I mean, right now, a lot of your viewers may have seen um, that there is a, a impeachment process being brought up against Lasso that should be play out in mid-May. There's kind of three potential outcomes that uh, there's one charge brought against him about one of his reporting ministers uh, having corrupt uh, dealings with the export of uh, oil, the transportation of it. And basically he'll either survive that impeachment if he's taken out, then his vice president will come into power and continue the, um, basically continue the, the mandate with mining as a key part of the economy. Or the third option is that uh, Lasso may uh, do what they call a muerte cruzado, dissolve Congress and then rule under executive uh, authority for four to six months and call new elections. If we were to call new elections uh, in the regional elections that were just held earlier this year, the Coriista party, uh, won the majority of uh, Quito and Guayaquil. So they would likely be the party that would have a chance to win. If they did win, they were the same uh, group that in 2014 saw mining as a critical part of the, the country's economy going forward. And they um, improved the fiscal regime, regulatory regime. So I think there's gonna be bumps in the road. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. I think um, in the long term, mining is going to be too important to the country um, to be cast aside. So I think in the long term, it'll continue. But, um, it, you know, we do have the current noise that's going on. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions um, that we have. I guess one that uh, kind of to close out, uh, just to review what news uh, might we expect from Luminex coming up in, in the uh, the coming months? Yeah, just a bunch more drill results. I mean, we've got uh, some the, some of the 
for Metador ones coming soon. Uh, we've got uh, Kuyas West uh, continuing to drill that off systematically. Um, and then uh, hopefully uh, get something out of uh, Anglo American, uh, you know, in, in the near term. Okay, great. Great. Well, I'd like to again thank, uh, thank Marshall and, and Scott for presenting today. And thanks everyone on the line for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back tomorrow afternoon when our webinar series continues with Sterling Metals presenting Wednesday, May 3rd at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.